So it's going to be my uh, far from home review. Expect some minor spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, go out and see it. And then come back to this. So, Far From Home. So basically this will be called Peter Barker Far From Home because Spider-Man is kind of an afterthought in my opinion in this film. Because the MCU version of Spider-Man is just not Spider-Man. It's somebody that wears a similar suit with similar powers. But it's really not Spider-Man. I had the same issues with Homecoming. This is better than Homecoming, but at the same time, it has, kind of has the same problems. No spider sense. <laughs> this kid is basically an idiot. I mean, spoilers, you give those glasses that Stark gives him to Mysterio, like an idiot. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this kid is so dumb. I'm like, what is he doing? It was like, of course, Mysterio. I knew his two wasn't going to be a good guy. That would have been so dumb. I'm like, I didn't buy any of that. And two, I knew those creatures were going to be projections. There's no other way Mysterio could fight anything like that. He just doesn't have that kind of power. He's a special effects wizard, not an actual super powered being. So, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. It was okay. I mean, I feel like it's a step in the right direction, but I had a little too much of the Spider-Man 2 thing going on, where I want to be normal, blah, blah, blah. So, like, and the whole thing with Spider-Man is that as much as he wants, may want a normal life, it's because of what happens to Uncle Ben that he can't, and he knows he has a better, a higher calling. Which is why he does what he does. Because that one night where he let that criminal escape, that's why he does what he does. It's not so he can throw away his tights every once in a while so he can get laid. He still get laid with me while being Spider Man. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Pretty sure that's why Mary Jane was an event was created. So he could have someone to come on to that knows a secret and still. Wants to give him some once in a while. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he didn't even give Liz Allen in the first one. I doubt he doubt he was going to because he never dated Liz in the comics either. So, I mean, as far as villains go, I think the Vulture is a better villain of what he was trying to accomplish, his reasons for doing what he was doing made more sense than Mysterio just basically being Syndrome from The Incredibles. That's basically who he was. He's Syndrome from The Incredibles. He wants to be a hero, willing to fake pretend being a hero in order to get attention from people. And then he dies out of his own hand. Same exact thing. <laughs> There's literally no difference. Oh, and he befriends a hero and then turns on the hero at the last second for no reason. Other than the fact that he's crazy. So that's basically Mysterio summed up. I mean, his character is pretty accurate with the comics. Special effects, was your all that. And I knew he wasn't going to be a good guy. I would have been so stupid. I didn't buy any of that. I think gets to my nerves, though. This kid always taking off his freaking mask. Everybody knows his freaking identity. The uh, light skin chick, phony ass MJ. Uh, Ned knows his identity. Fury knows. Freaking Mysterio knows. Well, he's dead now, so that doesn't really matter. But freaking Vulture knows he's in jail. And at the end of the film, post credit scene spoilers, uh, Quentin Beck reveals his identity. In a recording that he made up, he edited some uh, edited the footage because it was uploaded to one of his goons that still should have taken out 
because the way shield would operate is if Spider-Man or Iron Man is in the field, they would be going to the villain's hideout to take him out. But apparently, Fury wasn't even in the film. It was a scroll impersonating. Well, he was on vacation or something. What kind of BS is this? So I wasn't even in. The knife means the scrolls the proper way. They kind of use it as comic relief. It's stupid. It's a waste. Just a waste. The scrolls could have easily been the next five to ten years of storytelling. Who's a scroll? Who's not a scroll? It's like an animated cartoon. Or some minus heroes. But no. I gotta use the scroll as common relief. <laughs> this is exactly why I never saw Captain Marvel. I clearly didn't miss anything. <clears throat> I won't even rent it. That's how bad it is. I won't even rent it. Clearly a waste of money. Even 50 cents or however much it is to rent a film on iTunes. <laughs> for words so uh yeah it was all right it's not gonna be a very long review i just trying to get my basic thoughts out it was okay i like that they got peter out of this out of the shadow of tony stark i do wish that uh this wasn't a world spanning film because that's my biggest problem with these films Spider-Man doesn't really do the world traveling thing. That's more fantastic for Avenger stuff. Even the freaking X-Men don't really leave the X-Mansion unless they have to. The most they'll do is go into the city to deal with some kind of political stuff or whatever. But most of them even will stay at the mansion. And I'm still waiting for an X-Men film where they're playing baseball at the mansion. Just chilling out at the pool or something something local because every every x-men film has been about the freaking world ending or whatever which is kind of contradictory to what x-men actually represent that's another story though because part of it's kind of the same thing friendly neighborhood and they address it in the film so i appreciate because yes he is not world spanning hero. He tries to help Nick Fury, but Nick Fury's dumbass. I was like, ooh. I bet Hydra could trip anyway. <laughs> so it's like, for plot reasons, of course, obviously Spider-Man shows up and does the mission or whatever, but I wish they could stay a little more local. <laughs> As for the MJ thing, she's not Mary Jane, thankfully. She's just, I want to say, a love interest. Fine. I mean, she can't be Mary Jane. She's not a redhead, so. <laughs> Last I checked, African American people don't have red hair. Unless I'm colorblind. It's, it's culturally inaccurate. Impossible. <laughs> so don't get me started on that. Anyone else notice that it's always redheaded to get changed and no one else? You never see someone cast a blonde as a black chick. <laughs> no, they're pretty funny actually. Just to uh, get some laughs. How stupid Hollywood is. <laughs> I don't want to go off on a tangent, but then anyone else hear about that Ariel casting and how stupid it is? I personally really don't care much about The Little Mermaid, but as a fan of Disney, I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> kind of a shock to me. I'm like, for real? I mean, I heard they messed up Beauty and the Beast. I did not, didn't really care much for a new Aladdin film because and the lead actor looks really stiff. I haven't seen the film. I'm not going to because I really don't care. I'm making it a thing to ignore the Disney remakes because this is completely unnecessary. Every person on this damn planet has seen a freaking Disney film. 
I've seen all of them. I need to see a live action Lion King of a real ass lion. They're gonna look they're gonna look terrible when they talk because they're not real. <laughs> Lions don't talk because animation is better. I mean I can't wait for the live action Toy Story series. It should be great. See Tim Allen and uh, <laughs> Tom Hanks walking around in their Woody and Buzz Lightyear suits in real life. It should be fantastic, right? But back to Spider Man. So, uh, <laughs> eh. Out of five stars, I give it maybe three and a half. It's because there's some really good action sequences, but the story is a little weak. And little, the thing they were trying too hard to do the Spider-Man 2 thing. And Mysterio trying to be his friend was kind of dumb and I felt like it was kind of forced. But that was too easy. I'm like, how does this kid not see through this? <laughs> and this kid is so dumb. I mean, he came around towards the end of the film. Like, okay. But I think he should be a lot smarter than that. You know, he shouldn't be getting duped like this all the time. And he shouldn't be getting smacked around without sensing the danger coming a mile away. <laughs> and I got kind of excited when uh, Mysterio mentioned the multiverse. <laughs> I'm hoping that me and Peter would go into the multiverse and get another Tony Stark or something. Or retrieve Captain America from another multiverse. And then I heard a rumor that Falcon Captain America was supposed to make an appearance in this film. Thankfully that didn't happen. Can I explain what's wrong with that picture? Ignoring the comics. Ignoring the comics. Ignoring the comics. Falcon as Captain America makes no sense. He's not a super soldier. He barely knows Captain America. And he wouldn't last 30 seconds on the streets with or without that damn shield. He's been nothing but comic book relief. And we all know Bucky deserves the shield more than him. If not, then just leave it alone. I mean, if it's not Steve Rogers, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really read uh, comics that much anymore, but all this diversity stuff is kind of taking me off. Because do I need to even talk about the Witcher series coming out on Netflix? Because half the cast, <laughs> no offense, it looks like they're doing this PC crap. Politically correct for those of you that don't know what PC means. <laughs> and it's kind of irritating. I mean, they might as well have made Geralt. Asian or something. <laughs> All the respect to people who are different nationalities. Just to give you an example there. But I mean, Triss is not going to be a redhead. It's going to be a black chick for crying out loud. I don't even need to explain what's wrong with that. I mean, it's not about the color of someone's skin. It's about staying true to the source material. And in the world of the Witcher, there are no African people. Sorry people, that's just the world it is. Middle Earth, no black people there either. It's not a big deal. It's really not. It's just the world that, they, that this is. We gotta represent and make a new character. Make a new character, make a new series about those people. Don't bring your diversity crap into something that's been established for years has grown a, a huge audience like friggin' Harry Potter or Star Wars and put your diversity nonsense in there and just say, oh, this is the problem with uh, Black Ariel. That's all we're going to talk about, the fact that he's black now. We're not even talking about the character. We're talking about the color of his skin. <laughs> How is that not a stereotype? So don't explain that to me. It's a bloody stereotype now. Well, not even a stereotype, but it's a problem. <laughs> it's all people are going to talk about now is that it's not the character, it's the color of her skin now. It's going to matter. And that's the problem with modern Hollywood. It's all about someone's 
sexual preferences or the color of the skin or their nationality. It's not about the characters anymore. That's why Flash Thompson isn't a Caucasian dude. He's a, I don't know what the kid is, but. We gotta represent more than a straight white dude or a straight black dude. Not really. It really doesn't matter. I mean, this Spider-Man isn't really comic book accurate. He's more like Ultimate Spider-Man, but not even, because even that is an insult to Spider-Man. I mean, I couldn't care less about what Aunt May is, or whatever in this universe, but... She's very, very strange in this series, because she seems really, really... giddy for someone who lost her husband. I'm guessing a while ago. Because Ben's, Uncle Ben is never mentioned. And that's one of my problems with Homecoming is that they made Tony Stark the Uncle Ben replacement. And it failed. Because Uncle Ben would never ridicule him about trying to stop a villain like the vulture while Stark sitting on his ass drinking hot cocoa or whatever and wherever he was. Because, like, this is the same guy that announced on national TV, told the freaking Mandarin his address, leading multiple helicopters with missiles to his front door. And he's telling this kid, who could literally kick his ass if he wanted to, as he's done in the comics, to basically don't do any superhero stuff, which is what he's supposed to do anyway. You know, kid, don't do any superhero stuff. It's not what I brought you to Germany for. <laughs> well, it completely goes against everything that happened in the Civil War. I mean, he went to recruit the damn kid because of his power and his intelligence. And then, then he's saying, no, no, don't, don't, don't take down this, these supervillains. It's going to cause start wars in the streets and whatnot. No, don't do that while I sit on my ass in India or wherever. <laughs> that I care in the world. Please. That's the biggest problem with Homecoming because... And it kind of leads into this one as well because now you got Nick Fury. Basically trying to do the same thing. Similarly, not... Not as bad as what Stark was doing. But... As far as criticism goes, yeah. it's an improvement, but yeah, I'm done with the MCU. This is my last Marvel film. I mean, spoilers, Quentin Beck leaks Peter's identity at the end of the film, post credit scene, and that's pretty much it. So, you can never be Spider-Man ever again. You can never go to high school. <laughs> you can never go back to his neighborhood. Everybody knows now. <laughs> Just straight up says in the video that someone edited Spider-Man's real identity is Peter Parker. And then they show a picture of him on the screen, a little TV screen on the billboard. And it's like, well, shit. So that kind of ticked me off. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, I like to enjoy the film until that point. Why is it always the ending that sucks in these films, man? Endgame ending stinks. Uh, Toy Story 4 ending sucked ass. And now that's three in a row. <laughs> I can't see myself seeing Endgame again anytime soon. Even when it's on home video, I just, eh. It's one of those only projects I'm just skipping. I'm sure everybody else in the house will be overjoyed to watch it again, but I think Infinity War was enough for me. But uh, this one, Far From Home, or whatever it's called, it's going to be called Spider Man Far From Home, it's going to be called Peter Parker Far From Home. 
because there's see more Peter Parker than Spider-Man, <laughs> which again is annoying. It's like they always these Marvel films. Marvel films don't always take one step forward and one step back with their Spider-Man films. So like nothing has ever really been as good as Spider-Man 2 back in the day. For me, I like the Andrew Garfield films, especially the second one. I get the problems people have with them, but for me, I think the relationship aspects of Amazing Spider-Man 2 stand out. I mean, they did a good job with the relationship stuff in the Rain films, especially with Harry and Aunt May and Ben, Ben Parker. The Mary Jane stuff was ridiculous, but... Eh, the kid's kind of growing on me, but I've seen enough to know that I'm done. Eh. I can't stand the kid taking his mask off all the time. It's annoying. That's the problem I have with McGuire. Always taking his freaking mask off. Everybody freaking knows their identity. Like, oh my gosh. It's not just the whole freaking school while you're at it. Damn. Damn. So anyway, anyone watching this, give me a favor and no. Hit the like button for me, will you? Hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, all that jazz. Till next time.